technical analysis of the financial markets, a comprehensive guide to trading methods and applications, construction of flags and pendants, the construction of the two patterns differ slightly. The flag resembles a parallelogram or rectangle marked by two parallel chain lines that tend to slope against the prevailing chain. In a down chain, the flag would have a slight upward slope. The pendant is identified by two converging chain lines and is more horizontal. It very closely resembles a small symmetrical triangle. An important requirement is that volume should dry up noticeably while each of the patterns in forming both patterns are relatively short term and should be complete within one to three weeks. Pendants and flags in down chains tend to take even less time to develop and often last no longer than one or two weeks. Both buttons are complete on the penetration of the upper chain line in an up chain. The breaking of the lower chain line would signal resumption of down chains. The breaking of those chain lines should take place on heavier volume. As usual, upside volume is more critically important than downside volume. Measuring implications The measuring implications are similar for both patterns, flex and pendants are said to fly a half mass from a flagpole. The flagpole is a pre or soft advance or decline. The term half mass suggests that these minor continuation patterns tend to appear at about the halfway point of the move. In general, the move after the chain has resumed will duplicate the flag pole or the move just prior to the formation of the pattern. To be more precise, measure the distance of the preceding move from the original breakout point. That is to say, the point at which the original chain signal was given either by the penetration of a support or resistance level or an important chain line. That vertical distance of the preceding move is then measured from the breakout point of the flag or pendant. That is the point at which the upper line is broken in an up chain or the lower line in a down chain. Summary Let's summarize the more important points of both patterns. They are both preceded by an almost straight line move on heavy volume. Prices then post for about one to three weeks on very light volume. The chain resumes on a burst or objecting activity. Both patterns occur at about the midpoint of the market move. The pendant resembles a small horizontal symmetrical triangle. The flag resembles a small parallel ram that slopes against the prevailing chain. Both patterns take less time to develop in Dow chains. Both patterns are very common in the financial markets. The witch formation. The witch formation is similar to a symmetrical triangle. 
both in terms of its shape and the amount of time it takes to form laser symmetrical triangle. It is identified by two covering chain lines that come together at an apex. In terms of the amount of time it takes to form, the which usually lasts more than one month, but not more than three months, putting it into the intermediate category. What distinguishes the which it is its noticeable slant. The witch pattern has a noticeable slant either to the upside or the downside. As a rule, like the flag pattern, the witch slants against the prevailing chain. Therefore, a falling witch is considered bullish and a rising witch is bearish. Notice in Figure 6.8a that the bullish witch slants downward between two covering chain lines in the down chain in Figure 6.8b the covering chain lines have an unmistakable upward slant which is at S tops and bottom reversal patterns which is so up most often within the existing chain and usually constitute continuation patterns the which can appear at tops or bottoms and signal a chain reversal but that type of situation is much less common near the end of an up chain the chartist may observe a clear cut rising witch because a continuation witch in an up chain should slope downward against the prevailing chain the rising width is a clue to the charted that it is a bearish and not a bullish pattern at bottoms a falling witch would be a tip up of a possible end of a bear chain whether the witch appears in the middle or the end of a market move the market analyst should always be guided by the general maxim that a rising witch is bearish and a falling witch is bullish the rectangle formation the rectangle formation often goes by other limbs but is usually easy to spot on a price chart it represents a pulse in the chain during which prices move sideways between two parallel horizontal lines. The rectangle is sometimes referred to as a shading range or a concession area. In dietary parlance, it is referred to as a line. Whatever it is called, it usually represents just a consolidation period in the existing chain and it usually results in the direction of the market chain that precedes its occurrence. In terms of forecasting value, it can be viewed as being similar to the symmetrical triangle but with flat instead of causing chain lines. A decisive close outside either the upper or lower boundary signals completion of the rectangle and points the direction of the chain. The market analysts must always be on the alert. However, such a rectangular consolidation does not turn into a reversal pattern. In the uptrend zone in Figure 6.9a, for example, notice that 
the three bits might initially be viewed as a possible cheaper top reversal pattern. The importance of the volume pattern. One important clue to watch for is the volume pattern because the price swings in both directions are very broad. The analyst should keep a close eye on which moves have the heavier volume. If the rallies are on heavier and the setbacks on lighter volume, then the formation is probably a continuation in the uptrend. If the heavier volume is on the downside, then it can be considered a warning of a possible chain reversal in the works. Swing within the range can be checked. Some charts check the swings within such a pattern by viewing buying dips near bot near the bottom and selling rallies near the top of the range. The this technical enables the short term trader to take advantage of the well defined price boundaries and profit from an otherwise Chinese market because the positions are being taken at the extreme of the range. The risks are rel relatively small and well defined. If the trading range remains intact, this called the chain trading approach works quite well. When a breakout does occur, the trader not only assists the last losing trade immediately but can reverse the previous position by initiating a new trade in the direction of the new chain. Oscillators are especially useful in sideways trading markets but less useful once the breakout has occurred for reasons discussed in chapter 10. As a trader, assume the rectangle is a continuation pattern and take long positions near the narrow end of the price band in an uptrend or initiate short positions near the top of the range in down chance others avoid such Chinese markets on the weather and await a clear cut breakout before committing their funds. Most trend following systems perform very poorly during this period of sideways and Chinese market action. Other similarities and differences in terms of durations, the rectangle usually falls into the 1 to 3 month category similar to triangles and which is the volume pattern differs from other continuation patterns in the sense that the broad price swings prevent the usual drop of in activity seen in other such patterns. The most common measuring technical applied to the rectangle is based on the height of the price range. Measure the height of the trading range from top or to bottom and then project that vertical distance from the breakout point. This method is similar to the other vertical measuring technicals already mentioned and is based on the volatility of the market when we cover the cow in point and figure charting we will say more on the question of horizontal price measurements 
everything mentioned so far concerning volume on breakouts and the probability of return moves applies here as well because the upper and lower boundaries are horizontal and so well defined in the rectangle support and resistance levels are more clearly evident this means that on upside breakouts the top of the former price band should now provide solid support on any sell offs after a downside breakout in downtrends the bottom of the trading range should now provide a solid selling over the market on any rally items the measure move the measure move or the swing measurements as it is sometimes called describes the phenomenon where a major trend market advance or decline is divided into two equal and parallel moves as shown in figure 6.10a for this approach to work the market moves should be fairly orderly and well defined the measure move is really just a variation of some of the technical we have already touched on we have seen that some of the consolidation patterns such as flex and balance usually occur at about the halfway point of a market move we also mentioned the tendency of markets to reach it about a third to a half of a pre or chain before resuming that chain. In the measure move, when the chart is sees a well defined situation, such as in figure 6.10a with a rally from point A to point B, followed by a how the chain swing from point B to point C. It is assumed that the next leg in the up chain will come close to duplicating the first leg, the height of way. Therefore, is simply measured upward from the bottom of the correction at point C, the continuation head and shoulders patterns. In the previous chapter, we treat the head and shoulders pardon at some length and describe it as the best known and most trustworthy of all reversal patterns. The head and shoulder pardon can sometimes appear that appear as a continuation instead of a reversal pattern. In the continuation head and shoulders variety, prices trade out a pattern that looks very similar to a sideways rectangular pattern, except that the middle chute in an up chain tends to be lower than either of the two shoulders. In a down chain, the middle peak in the consolidation exists. The other two picks. The reason in both cases is a head and shoulders pattern turned upside down. Because it is turned upside down, there is no chance of confusing it with the reversal pattern. Confirmation and divergence. The principle of Confirmation is one of the common themes running throughout the entire subject of market analysis and is used in conjunction with its counterpart divergence. We will introduce both concepts here and expand 
their meaning but we will return to them them again and again throughout the book because their impact is so important we are discussing confirmation here in the context of chart patterns but it applies to virtually every aspect of technical analysis confirmation refers to the comparison of all technical signals and indicators to ensure that most of those indicators are pointing in the same direction and are confirming one another divergence is the opposite of confirmation and refers to a situation where different technical indicators fall to confirm one another why it is being used here a, in a negative sense divergence in is a valuable concept in market analysis and one of the best early warning signals of impending trend reversals we will discuss the principle of divergence at greater length in chapter 10 oscillators and contrary opinion volume and open interest volume and open interest as secondary indicators let's begin by placing volume and open interest in their proper perspective price is by far that the most important volume and open interest are secondary in important and are used primarily as confirming indicators of those two volume is a more important volume volume is a number of entities traded during the time period under study because we will be dealing primarily with daily bar charts our main concern is with daily volume that daily volume is plot by a vertical bar at the bottom of the chart under the day's price action. Volume can be plot for weekly bar charts as well. In that case, total volume for the week would simply be plot under the bar representing that week's price action. Volume is usually not used However, on monthly bar charts, open interest in futures, the total number of outstanding or unliquidated contracts at the end of the day is open interest. In Figure 7.2, open interest is a solid line plotted on the chart under its corresponding price data for the day but above the volume bars remember that official volume and open interest figures are reported a day late in the futures markets and are therefore plotted with a one day left this that means that each day the charted plus the high low and closing price bar for the last day of trading but plus the official volume and open interest figures for the previous day. Open interest represents the total number of outstanding longs or shorts in the market, not the sum of both. Open interest is the number of contracts. A contract must have both a buyer and a seller. Therefore, to market participants, a buyer and a seller combine to create only one contract. The open interest figure report each day is followed by either a positive or negative 
number so in the increase or decrease in the number of contracts for that day it is so change in the open interest levels either up or down that gives the charted clues as to the changing ch character of market participation and give open interest is forecasting value how changes in open interest occur in order to get the significance of how changes in the open interest numbers are interpreted the reader must first understand how each check produced as a chain in those numbers every time a check is complete on the floor of the exchange the open interest is affected in one of three ways it increases decreases or stay unchanged let's see how those changes occur in the first case both the buyer and seller are initiating a new position and a new contract is established in case two the buyer is initiating a new long position but the seller is merely liquidating an old long one is in entering and the other exiting a check the result is a stand up and no chain takes place in the number of contracts in case three the same thing happens except this time it is a seller who is initiating a new sort and the buyer who is only covering an old sort because one of the traders is entering and the other assisting a chain again no chain is produced in case for both traders are liquidating an old position and the open interest decreases accordingly to sum, to sum up if both participants in a chain are initiating a new position the open interest will increase if both are liquidating an old position the open interest will decline if however one is initiating a new chain when the other but is liquidating an old chain open interest will remain unchanged by looking at the net chain in the total open interest at the end of the day the chartist is able to determine where the money is flowing into out of the market this information enables the analyst to draw some conclusions about the strength or weakness of the current price chain general rules for interpreting volume and open interest the futures technique incorporates volume and open interest information into market analysis the rules for the interpretation of volume and open interest are generally combined because they are so similar there are however some distinction between the two that should be addressed we will begin here with a statement of the general rules for both having done that we will then cheat each one separately before combining them again at the end if volume and open interest are both increasing then the current price chain will probably continue in its present direction if however volume and open interest are declining the action can be viewed as a warning that the current price chain may be nearing an end having said that let's now take 
a look at volume and open interest separately interpretation of volume for all markets the level of volume measures the intensity or urgency behind the price move heavier volume reflects a higher degree of intensity or pressures by monitoring the level of volume along with price action the technician is better able to cut the buying or selling pressure behind the market moves this information can then be used to confirm price movement or one that a price move is not to be just to state the rule more concisely volume should increase or expand in the direction of the existing price chain in an up chain volume should be heavier as the price moves higher and should decrease or contract on price dips as long as the pattern continues volume is said to be confirming the price chain the chartist is also watching for signs of divergence divergence occurs if the penetration of a previous high by the price chain takes place on declining volume this action allows the chartist to diminishing buying pressures if the volume also shows a tendency to pick up on price dips the an analyst begins to worry that the uptrend is in trouble volume as confirmation in price patterns during our treatment of price patterns in chapters 5 and 6 volume was mentioned several times as an important confirming indicator one of the first signs of a head and shoulders top occur when prices move into new highs during the formation of the head on light volume with heavier activity on the subsequent decline to the neckline the double and triple tops so lighter volume on each successive peak followed by heavier downside activity continuation patterns like the triangle should be accompanied by a gradual drop of in volume as a rule the resolution of own price pattern should be accompanied by heavier trading activity if the signal given by that breakout is green in a down chain the volume should be heavier during down moves moves and nighter on bonds as long as the patterns continues the selling pressure is greater than buying pressure and the down chain should continue it's only when that pattern begins to change the that the chartist start looking for signs of a bottom volume reset price by monitoring the price and volume together we are actually using two different tools to measure the same thing pressure by the mere fact that prices are changing higher we can see that there is more buying than selling pressure this tends to reason than that the greater volume should take place in the same direction as the prevailing chain technicians believe that volume precedes price meaning that the loss of upside pressure in an up chain or down chain pressure actually shows up in the volume figures before it is manifest 
in a reversal of the price chain on balance volume. Technicians have experimented with many volume indicators to help quantify buying or selling pressure, trying to eyeball the vertical volume but along the bottom of the chart is not always precise enough to detect significant shifts in the volume flow. The simplest and best known of these volume indicators is on balance volume or OBV developed and popularized by Joseph Granville in his 1963 book Granville New Key to Stock Market Profits OBV actually produced a carving knife on the price chart this knife can be used either to confirm the quality of the current price chain or one of an impending reversal by diverging from the price action figure 7.6 shows the price chart with the obv9 along the bottom of the chart instead of the volume bars notice how much easier it is to follow the volume chain with the obv9 the construction of the obv9 is simplicity itself the total volume for each day is assigned a plus or minus value depending on where the prices close higher or lower for that day a higher close causes the volume for that day to be given a plus value while a lower close cause for negative volume a running cumulative total is then maintained by adding or subtracting each day's volume based on the direction of the market close. It is the direction of the OBV line that is important and not the actual numbers themselves. The actual OBV values will differ depending on how far back you are charting. Let the computer handle the calculations. Concentrate on the direction of the OBV line. The on plant volume line should follow in the same direction as the price chain. If prices show a series of higher peaks and choose the OBV line should do the same if prices are trending lower so should be the OBV line is when the volume line falls to move in the same direction as prices that a divergence exists and once a proposes possible chain reversal alternatives to OBV the on balance volume line that is soft reasonably well but it has some shortcomings for one thing it assigns an entire day's volume a plus or minus value suppose a market close up on the day by some minimal amount such as one or two ticks is it reasonable to assign all of that day's activity a positive value or consider a situation where the market spends most of the day on the upside but then close slightly lower should all of that day's volume be given a negative value to resolve these questions technicians have experiments with many variations of OBV in an atom to discover the true upside and downside volume. One 
polarization to, is to give greater weight to those days where the chain is the strongest on an update. For example, the volume is multiplied by the amount of the price again. This technical still assigns positive and negative values but gives greater weight to those days with greater price movement and reduce the impact of those days where the actual price change is minimal. There are more sophisticated formulas that blend volume with price action. Them seem best demand index. For example, combines price and volume into a leading market indicator. The Herrick Payoff Index is open interest to measure money flow. It should be noted that volume reporting in the stock market is much more useful than in the future markets. Stock trading volume is reported immediately why it is reported a day late for futures, levels of upside and downside volume are also available for stocks but not in futures. The availability of volume data for stocks on each price chain during the day has facilitated an even even more advanced indicator called money flows developed by Leslo Birinzi dot this green thumb version of OBV checks the level of volume on each price chain in order to determine if money is flowing into or out of a stock. This sophisticated calculation however requires a lot of computer power and isn't readily available to most traders. This more sophisticated variation of OBV have basically the same intent to determine whether the heavier volume is taking place on the upside or the downside. Even with its simplicity, the OBV 19 does a pretty good job of checking the volume flow in a market either in futures or stocks and OBV is readily available on most charting software. Most charting packages even allow you to plot the OBV line right over the price data for even easier comparison. Other volume limitations in futures. We already mentioned the problem of the one-day lag in reporting futures volume. There is also the relatively and what practice of using total volume numbers to analyze individual contracts instead of each contract's actual volume. There are good reasons for using total volume, but how that one's deal with situations when some contracts close higher and others lower in the same futures market on the same day, the mid days produce other problems. Days when markets are locked, limit up usually produce very light volume. This is a sign of strength as the numbers of buyers so overwhelm the sellers that prices reach the maximum trading limit and case trading according to the traditional rules of interpretation live volume on a rally is where is the live volume on limit days is a 
violation of that principle and can distort OBV numbers. Even with these limitations, however, volume analysis can still be used in the future markets and the technical trader would be well advised to keep a watchful eye on volume indications. The Basic of Finance Chapter 5 Form of Business Enterprise Financial management is not restricted to large cooperation. It is necessary in all forms and size of business. The three major forms of business organization are the sole proprietorship, the partnership, and the cooperation. These forms differ in a number of factors, of which though most important to financial decision making are taxation, degree of control, owner's liability, ease of transferring ownership, ability to raise additional funds, longevity of the business. We summarize the advantage and disadvantage of the major form of business from the point of view of financial decision making in XHB 5.1. So, proprietorship and partnership. Also, proprietorship is a business entity owned by one party and is the simplest of the form of business. It is easy to form. The business income is taxed along with the owner other income. The, the owner is liable for the death of the business. The owner controls the decision of the business. The business and when the owner does. It is 5.1 characteristic of the basic form of business. So, proprietorship. Advantage of the proprietor is the sole business decision maker. The proprietor receives all income from the business. Income from the business is taxed once at the individual taxpayer level. Disadvantage the proprietor is liable for all death of the business, unlimited liabilities. The proprietorship has a limited life. There is limited access to additional funds. Partnership Advantage Partners receive income according to in terms in partnership agreement. Income from business is taxed once as the partner personal income. Decision making rests with the general partner only. Disadvantage of partnership Each partner is liable for all the death of the partnership. The partnership life is determined by agreement or the life of the partners. There is limited access to additional funds. Advantage of corporations. Czar. Each partner is liable for all the death of the partnership. The partnership life is determined by agreement or the life of the partners. There is limited access to additional funds. Disadvantage of corporations. The income paid to owners is subjected to double taxation. Ownership and management are separate in larger organization. The sole proprietorship is often the starting point of a small fledging business 
but also proprietorship is often limited in its access to funds beyond bank loans. Another form of business that offers additional source of funds is the partnership. A partnership is an agreement between two or more persons to operate a business. A partnership is similar to a sole proprietorship, except instead of one proprietor, there is more than one. The fact that there is more than one proprietor introduces some issues. Who has a say in the day-to-day -day operation of the business? Who is liable? That is financially responsible for the debt of the business. How is the income distributed among the owners? How is the income taxed? Some of these issues are resolved with the partnership agreement. Others are resolved by law. The partnership agreement describes how profit and losses are to be shared among the partners, and it details their responsibilities in the management of the business. Most partnerships are general partnership, consisting only of general partner who participate fully in the management of the business, share in its profit and losses, and are responsible for its liabilities. Each general partner is personally and individually liable for the death of the business, even if the death were contracted by other partner. A limited partnership consists of at least one general partner and one limited partner. Limited partners invest in the business but do not participate in its management. A limited partner share in the profit and losses of business is limited by the partnership agreement. In addition, a limited partner is not liable for the death incurred by the business beyond his or her initial investment. A partnership is not taxed as a separate entity. Instead, each partner reports his or her share of the business profit or loss on his or her personal income tax return. Each partner share is taxed as if it were from a sole propri proprietorship. The life of a partnership may be limited by the partnership agreement. For example, the partner may agree that the partnership is to exist only for a specified number of years or only for the duration of a specific business transaction. The partnership must be terminated when any one of the partners died, no matter what is specified in the partnership agreement. Partnership interest cannot be passed to heirs. At the death of any partner, the partnership is dissolved and perhaps renegotiated. One of the drawbacks of partnership is that a partner's interest in the business cannot be sold without a consent of the, the other partners. So a partner who needs to sell his or her interest because of, say, personal financial need may not be able to do so. Still another problem involves ending a partnership and setting up mainly because it is difficult to determine the value of the partnership and of each partner shares. Another drawback is the partnership limited access to new funds short of selling part 
of their own ownership interest. The partners can raise money only by borrowing from banks, and here too there is a limit to what a bank will lend a usually small partnership. Corporations. A corporation is a legal entity created under state laws through the process of incorporation. The Corporation is an organization capable of entering into contract and carrying out business under its own name, separate from its owners. To become a corporation, state laws generally require that a company must do the following five article of incorporations. Adopt a set of bylaws and form a board of directors. The article of incorporation specifies the legal name of the corporation, its place of business, and the nature of its business. This certificate gives life to a corporation in the sense that it represents a contract between. The corporation and its owners. This contract authorizes the corporation to issue units of ownership called shares, and specifies the right of the owners, the shareholders. The bylaws are the rule of governance for the corporation. The bylaws define the right. An obligation of official members of the board of directors and shareholders. In most large corporation, it is not possible for each owner to participate in monitoring the management of business. Therefore, the owner of a corporation elect a board of directors. To represent them in the major business decision, and to monitor the activity of the corporation management, the board of directors in turn appoint and oversees the officer of the corporation. Directors who are also employees of the corporation are called insider directors. Those who have no other position within the corporation, the outside director or independent directors, the state recognizes the existence of the corporation in the corporate charter. Once created, the corporation can enter into contract, adopt a legal name, sued or be sued. And continue in existence forever. Through owners may die, the corporation continues to live. The liability of owners is limited to the amount they have invested in the corporation through the share of ownership they purchased. The corporation is a taxable entity. It files its Own income tax return and pays taxes on its income. The ownership of a car operation, also referred to as stock or equities, is represented as share of stock. A corporation has just a few owners who exert complete control. Over the decision of the corporation, it referred to as a closely held corporation or a close corporation. A corporation whose ownership share the sold outside of a close group of owners is referred to as a publicly held corporation or a public corporation. March. Inch producer of M&M candies 
and other confectionery's pro product is a closely held corporation. Hershey Food, also a producer of candy products, among other things, is a publicly held corporation. The shares of public corporation are freely traded in securities market, such as the New York Stock Exchange. Hence, the ownership of a publicly held corporation is more easily transferred than the ownership of a proprietorship, a partnership, or a closely held corporation. How is income double taxed? Consider a corporation with one hundred millions dollar of taxable income. Let's assume a simple tax system with a flat corporate tax rate is thirty-five percent. The corporation pays thirty millions dollars in taxes and therefore has. Sixty-five million dollar in earning after tax. Now suppose that same corporation pay all of its earning to its shareholder in the form of a cash dividend. Let assume a simple tax system with a flat individual tax rate of thirty percent. Therefore, the tax the owner pay is. Individual income tax is equal zero point three times sixty five million dollar is equal to nineteen point five million dollar. The total tax paid on this company's incomes is effectively thirty five million dollar plus. Nineteen point five million dollar is equal to fifty four point four million dollar. Therefore, every dollar of income of the corporation is taxed at the rate of fifty four point five million dollar divided one hundred million dollar is equal to. Fifty-four point five percent. Companies whose stock is traded traded in public market are required to file an initial registration statement with the Security and Exchange Commission, a federal agency created to oversee the enforcement of U.S. securities laws. The statement provide financial statement, article of incorporation, and descriptive information regarding the nature of the business, the debt and stock of the corporation, the officer and directors, and any individual who own more than ten percent of the stock, among other items. Try it. Effective tax rate. Consider a company has generate two million dollars in taxable income for a year. If the corporate tax rate is thirty eight percent and the individual shareholders tax rate is forty percent, what is the effective tax rate on the corporation income? If all the corporation income after tax is distributed to owners in the form of dividends, the limited liability company, a popular form of business, especially with small business, is the hybrid form of business. The limited liability company. LLC or a limited liability partnership (LLP), which combine the best feature of a partnership and a corporation. In 1988, the Internal Revenue Services 
IRS ruled that the LLC may be treated as a partnership for tax purpose, while retaining its limited liability for its owner. Since the since this ruling, every state had passed legislation permitting limited liability companies. The LLC differs slightly from the LLP because in the latter, the partner may be liable for some, but not all, of the death of the business. However, the distinction is subtle and most rules that apply to an LLC apply to an LLP as well. Though state laws vary slightly, in general, the owner of LLCs have limited liability. Therefore, the LLC and LLP forms represent a hybrid with the best of both partnership and corporation. The owner of an LLC are referred to as member and these owners may be individual, partnership, corporation and other entities. Though there are few restrictions to who may form an LLC, bank and insurance companies are not permitted to operate as LLCs. Some type of companies that are prohibited from doing business as a corporation may be permitted to form an LLC. For example, accounting companies may be may operate as an LLC or an LLP, but cannot operate as a corporation. The LLC is not considered a form of business for tax purpose, so a company formed as an LLC must file as a corporation, a partnership, or a sole proprietorship. In general, a LLP must file as a partnership. The IRS consider the LLC to be taxed as a partnership if the company has no more than two of the following characteristics. Limited liabilities, centralized management, free transferability of ownership interest, and continuity of life. If the company has more than two of these, it will be treated as a corporation for tax purpose, subjecting the income to taxation in both the company level and the owner. A drawback of an LLC for tax purpose is that if the LLC has a net operating loss, the amount of the loss that is deductible for tax purpose is limited because the owner liability is limited. Other forms of business, in addition to the proprietorship, partnership and corporate form of business, an enterprise may be conducted using other form of business, such as the master limited partnership, the professional corporation and the joint venture. A master limited partnership, MLP, is a partnership with limited partner ownership interests that are traded on an organized exchange. For example, more than two dozen master limited partnerships are listed on the New York Stock Exchange, including the Cedar Fair Global Partners and Sunoco Logistic Partner Partnership. Many of these MIPs operate in the oil and gas industry. Ownership interest, which represent a specified ownership percentage, are traded in much the same way as the share of stock of a corporation. One difference, however, is that a corporation can raise new capital by issuing 
new ownership interest, whereas a master limited partnership cannot because it is not possible to sell more than a 100 instead in the partnership, yet it is possible to sell additional share of stock in a corporation. Another difference is that the income of a master limited partnership is taxed only once as partner individual income. Another variant of the corporate form of business is the professional corporation. A professional corporation is an organization that is formed under state law and treated as a corporation for federal tax law purpose. Yet, that has unlimited liability for its owners. The owners are personally liable for the death of the corporation. Businesses that are likely to form such corporation are those that provide services and require state licensing, such as physician, architect, and attorney. Practice since it is generally felt that it is in the public interest to hold such professional responsible for the liabilities of the business. A joint venture, which may be structured as either a partnership or as a corporation, is a business undertaken by a group of persons or entities such as a partnership or corporation for a specific business activity then therefore do not constitute a continuing relationship among the parties for tax and other legal purpose a joint venture partnership is treated as a partnership and a joint venture corporation is treated as a corporation U.S. corporations have entered into joint venture with foreign corporation, enhancing partic participant and competition in the global marketplace. Joint ventures are becoming increasingly popular as a way of doing business. Participant, whether, whether individual, partnership, or corporation, get together to exploit a specific business opportunity afterward the the venture can be dissolved reason aliens among com communication and entertainment companies have sparked through though about what the future form of doing business will be some believe that what lies ahead is a virtual enterprise a temporary alliance without all the bureaucracy of the typical corporation that can move quickly and decisively to take advantage of profitable business opportunities. Prevalence The number of sole proprietorship in the U.S. is significantly larger than that of partnership and corporations as you can see in Exhibit 5.2 for the U.S. based on 2006 tax return. However, the net income of corporations, which typically are larger firm than partnership and so proprietorship, comprise the larger portion of taxable income in the U.S. The Objective of Financial Management So far, we have seen that financial managers are primarily concerned with investment decision and financing decision within business organization. The great majority of these decisions are made within a, the corporate business structure which better accommodate growth and is responsible for over 67% of U.S. business net income. 
one such issue concern is objective of financial decision making. What goal or goals do manager have in mind when they choose between financial alternative, say between distributing current income among shareholders and investing it to increase future incomes? There actually one financial objective, the maximization of the economic well-being or width of the owner. Whenever a decision is to be made, management should choose the alternative that most increase the width of the owners of the business. A measure of owner's economic well-being. The price of a share of stock at any times or its market value represent the price that buyer in a free market are willing to pay for it. The market value of shareholders' equity is the value of all owners' interest in the corporation. This market value is also referred to as the stock market capitalization or simply its market cap. It is calculated as the product of the market value of one share of stock and the number of shares of stock outstanding. Market value of shareholders' equity is equal to market price per share of stock times number of shares outstanding. The number of share of stock outstanding is the total number of shares that the owned by shareholder. For example, on December 24, 2009, there will there were 3.81 billion Walmart common shares outstanding. The price per share at the closing on the date was. $55.5. Therefore, the market value of Walmart common stock is 3.81 billion times $55.5 is equal to 200. Point two hundred sixteen billion dollars. Investor buy share of stock in an anticipation of future dividends and increase in the market value of the stock. How much are they willing to pay today for this future enhanced uncertain stream of dividends? They are willing to pay exactly what they believe it is worth today, an amount that is called the present value, an important financial concept that we discussed in Chapter 10. The present value of share of stock reflect the following factors. The uncertainties associated with receiving future payment. The timing of these future payments. Compensation for tying up funds in this investment. The market price of share is a measure of owners' economic well-being. Does this mean that if the share price go up, management is doing a good job? Not necessarily. Share price often can be influenced by factors beyond the control of management. These factors include expectation regarding the economy, returns available on alternative investment such as bands, and even how investors view the company and the idea of investing. These factors influence the price of shares through their effect on expectation regarding future cash flow and investor evaluation of those cash flow. Nonetheless, manager can still 
maximize the value of owner's equity given current economic condition and expectation. They do so by carefully considering the expected benefit, risk, and timing of the returns on proposed investment. Triad Market Capitalization The following data is available for a company at a specific point in time. Average late daily volume of share traded is $11.5 million. Book value per share is $18.27. Market price per share is $64.7. Number of share outstanding is $2.76 billion. What is the market capitalization of this com company? Financial management and the maximization of owner width. Financial managers are charged with responsibility of making decisions that maximize owner width. For a corpor corporation, that responsibility translates into maximizing the value of shareholders. Equities. If the market for stock is efficient, the value of a share of stock in a corporation should reflect investor expectation regarding the future prospect of the corporation. The value of a stock will change at investor expectation about the future change. For financial manager decision to add value the present the present value of the benefit resulting from decision must outweigh the associated cost where cost include the cost of capital if there is a separate separation of the ownership and management of a company that is the owner are not also the manager of the company there are additional issues to confront. What if a decision is in the best interest of the company but not in the best interest of the manager? How can owner ensure that manager are watching out for the owner instead? How can owner mo motivate manager to make decisions that are best for the owners? We address these issues and more in the next section. The agency relationship. If you are the sole owner of a business, you make the decision that affect your own well-being. But what if you are a financial manager of a business and you are not the sole owner? In this case, you are making decision for owner other than yourself you the financial manager are an agent an agent is a person who act for and assert powers of another person or group of persons the person or group of persons the agent represent is referred to as the principal the re relationship between the agent and his or her principal is an agency relationship. There is an agency relationship between the manager and the shareholder of corporation. Problem with the agency relationship. In an agency relationship, the agent is charged with the responsibility of acting for the principal. It is possible the agent may not act in the best interest of the principal, but instead act in his or her own self-interest. Yes, because the agent has his or her own objective of maximizing personal width. In a large corporation, for example, the manager may enjoy many rent benefits, such as Golf club membership, access to private jet, 
and company cars. These benefit also call perquisite or perk may be useful in conducting business and may help attract or retain management personnel. But there is a room for abuse. What if the manager start spending more time at the golf course than at their desk? What if they use the company jet for personal travel? What if they buy company cars for their teenager to drive? <laughs> the abuse of perquisite or impose cost on the company and ultimately on the owner of the company. There is also a possibility that manager who feels secure in their position may not bother to expend their best effort toward the business. This is referred to as shirking, and it too imposes a cost to the companies. Finally, there is a possibility that manager will act in their own self-interest rather than the in the interest of the shareholder when those interests clash. For example, management may fight the acquisition of their company by some other company, even if the acquisition would benefit shareholders. Why? In most takeovers, the management p personnel of the acquired company generally lose their job and vision that some company is making an offer to acquire the company that you manage. Are you happy that the acquiring company is offering the shareholder of your company more for their stock than its current market value? If you are looking out for their best interest, you should be. It, are you happy about the likely prospect of losing your job? Most likely not. Defensiveness by corporate manager in the case of takeovers, whether warranted or not, emphasize the potential for conflict between the interest of the owner and the interest of management. Defending against a takeover that would not produce a benefit for the shareholders is consistent with management obligation. However, defending against a takeover that would produce a benefit for shareholder, but also a detriment to management, for example, lo lost job, would be contrary to management duty to shareholders. Cost of the agency relationship. There are costs involved with any effort to minimize the potential for conflict between the principal interest and the agent interest. Such costs are called agency costs, and they are of three types, monitoring cost, banding cost, and residual loss. Monitoring costs are costs incurred by the principal to monitor or limit the action of the agent. In a corporation, shareholder may require management to pri periodically report on their activity via audited accounting statement, which are sent to shareholder. The fees for auditing and preparing the financial statement and the manager time lost in preparing such statements are mon monitoring cost. Another example is the implicit cost encoder when shareholders limit the decision making power of manager. By doing so, the owner may miss profitable investment opportunities the foregone profit is a monitoring cost. The board of directors of a corporation has a 
fiduciary duty to shareholders. That is the legal responsibility to make decisions or to see that decisions are made that are in the best interest of shareholders. Part of that responsibility is to ensure ensure that managerial decisions are also in the best interest of the shareholders. Therefore, at least part of the cost of having directors is a monitoring cost. Banding costs are incurred by agents to assure principle that they will act in the principal best interest. The name come from the agent promise or ban to take certain action. A manager may enter into a contract that required him or her to stay on with the company even though another company acquired it. An implicit cost is then incurred by the manager who foregoes other employment opportunities. Even when monitoring and bonding, banding device are used, there may be some diversion between the interest of principal and those of agent. The resulting cost, called the residual loss, is the implicit cost that result because the principal and the agent instead cannot perfectly align even when monitoring and banding costs are incurred.